Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi. Oh, man. It's Thanksgiving week. And I am very thankful for uh, my family, my awesome house, my basement, which I'm going to finish one day. I'm going to finish it one day. I'm going to finish it. Don't don't say that. I, I don't get done. Don't get done. And, um, oh, Transformers. And I have a few Transformers here I'd like to open. Since it's, it's uh, the holidays, naturally I'm thinking of uh, evil things. So I thought we'd open a trifecta of evil dudes. We have... War for Cybertron, Siege Trilogy, Barricade. That's one. We have Studio Series number 46 from the Bumblebee film, Dropkick. That's two. And from Transformers Cyberverse, we have Laserbeak Blast Soundwave. And that's three. So three different dudes, all Decepticons, different lines. Let's compare and contrast. Here we go. First, we have uh, we have uh, Barricade. Barricade was first introduced, this version of Barricade, first introduced in the 2007 film. There was a, um, at some point, there was a, uh, I think it was, it was Dark of the Moon that I think Aaron had pitched that Barricade was going to come back, but it turns out the whole time it was actually Prowl in disguise. He was infiltrating the Decepticons, and that's why uh, Barricade wasn't at that battle on the highway in the first movie, because it was really Prowl. So, uh, we've cut the tape. He comes in a plastic tray. He's, uh, he's strapped in there. He comes with a nice little backer, right? I don't know what that symbol means. You know what it means? It means nothing. We have uh, instructions, and we have a pair of warnings in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Twenty-six languages. We have a warning in twenty-six languages, and all sorts of various information, copyright information, distribution information on the back of this. Um, I guess it's so much information they couldn't fit it on the box anywhere because I mean look at all this Look at this and you know what's not on the box? You know what's on not on the box a bio of the character instead we have all this Information no text back nothing nothing We get a nice book and I'm just curious to see uh, it's just a standard, you know, change, change, change instructions. No uh, printing on it so that they don't have to translate that. There is some Cybertronian on here. And I wonder if that translates to anything. All right. So what is new about Barricade? Um, nothing. <laughs> I think he just shares the same head as a uh, smokescreen does along with the blasters from, I believe, Blue Streak, and the little uh, cop siren part from, from Prowl. Now, in the comic books, Barricade is a law enforcement officer before he joins the Decepticons in the, cu in the current IDW books. All right, so let's see here. Let's put on his shoulder cannons. The shoulder cannons are new for Barricade, but um, I guess they couldn't make headlight cannons, you know, the, the headlight cannons that he has in the film. I guess maybe that would look weird. 
I think that was a good choice not to include them. Um, so no blaster instead. He's got the the two shoulder cannons. They can, I think they can connect together to form a blaster. Or they're, yeah, they're individual blasters. And uh, I don't believe they connect. Well, no, not really. They don't really connect. Overall, plastic quality seems to be pretty good. Despite this mold being used a number of times, you have a uh, proud Blue Streak smokescreen and barricade. Here is the fourth dude, and he seems pretty sturdy, very sturdy. There doesn't seem to be any mold deg degradation with him. So that is, uh, is a plus. And I just noticed the wrist, the hands are articulated, which is great. That is great. I'm really happy with this. I'm thankful for this. All right, let's move on to something um, maybe a little older for kids. Let's see what the age. Age is eight plus, this is eight plus, and this is six plus. But uh, it's your movie toy, so it might be a little older collector, it might be a little harder to transform. So, uh, Dropkick, I've had this character sitting on my shelf for a while. And I thought, no time like the present. Now, Bumblebee really didn't get a vast, exclusive toy line like the other films. Instead, uh, what we consider the main line, guys, ended up in the studio series. Which is fine. There just wasn't a whole lot of them. You know, it gets the st standard background. Uh, looks like it's uh, out in middle America. Uh, let's see... Again, with the instructions, no, uh, no pull this, lower that, it's just change. Um, again, oh, there is a little bio. It's a little backstory. He's a 1974 AMC Javelin. That is great. It's a one-sentence backstory. Yeah. That's it. There's a one sentence backstory. It's something. It's better than nothing. It's something. I'm not happy about it, but it's something. All right. Oh! This is an all new figure for me. I'm pretty excited. It's not every day I get to play with an all new character, or all, all new toy. Um, I'm not using my clippers right now just because uh, I'm working in a new part of the basement and uh, I don't know where they are. Okay, so here's Dropkick. Pretty solid. Not loosey-goosey like the uh, like Shatter was when I got her out of the box. This guy is actually pretty pretty solid. Look, the legs are staying in place. He's got a weapon. And the weapon works uh, somehow. Is it intuitive? It is intuitive. Boom! Intuitive. And you know what's cool? Look at that. Despite this moving movie toy, the doors form just kind of hang off the back like that just like little wings now i know there's only so many ways you can transform a car but i do love the jazz doors where they kind of just like fold in like if you have that uh not masterpiece of jazz i forget what company it is it's really good though it just kind of folds down and underneath the hood here that's pretty good um but it just goes to show you, you know, here we are 35 years later and we still have these doors sticking out. And I don't look at it as a design flaw. I look at it as design continuity. Inadvertent design continuity. All right, now, I have been really just like not into the Cyberverse uh, uh, show 
and I'm really just, I have a hard time with the toys. I was uh, watching some TV last night, and I'm like, let me just open Optimus. You know, he's, it's Optimus. You know, you gotta open Optimus. And I'm playing with, with Optimus, I'm like, man, I think even though it's recommended for six-year-olds, I still think six-year-old me would be like a little upset about it. But um, I think my six-year-old, my five-year-old, I have uh, what's her name is eight, and the other one is uh, five. I think my five-year-old will be very happy with this. It's easy to transform. It's got a nice, fun action. You know, this is the same action that you know a lot of He-Man figures had back in the day. So. But on to Soundwave. All right. So what I do, I don't often. Uh, open card figures on here. So I'm gonna show you how I used to do it back in the day All right, so uh, I used to save all these card backs. I don't know why But I, I just used to save them. So I take a blade. I make sure it's, it's a sharp blade. So it's a relatively new blade You want to cut away from yourself It slides in and it's just like butter Look at that, look at that. And that way you get a nice clean card back. All right. You get a nice clean card back. What is that symbol? Is that from the show? Is that the Allspark? I don't know. I will give this line credit that there's a, a deadlock in it. I, I give him credit for that. Absolute credit. All right, so he comes in uh, plastic, plastic clamshell. We open them up. There's no bio on this, again. So see, here, here's the thing. Not that every character needs a bio, but when you have, this is, this is an introductory sound wave. So a child who is hungry for information, there absolutely should be a bio on this one more so than the stuff that's aimed at the older kids. The older kids know how to look for that information. They know who the characters are. This might be a kid's first Transformer and they, there really should be something in here to invoke what the character is, who the character is. And uh, it just says evil, function, calculating spy. Some poses may require additional support. I mean, that doesn't really tell you anything. It doesn't really give you anything on the character. And I'm just looking to see if it says, go watch the cartoon. And nowhere on here does it say, go watch the cartoon. Let's see if on the front of the package. Warrior class. Made in Vietnam. No, I don't see anything about, about the cartoon. All right. Oh, look at that. So, you know, he's like Soundwave Superior, and then here's Laserbeak. But Laserbeak is permanently attached. I, it doesn't bother me. I, I understand why that's there. Um, this, since it's made for younger kids, doesn't have any twist ties. I guess they're not too worried about theft or it's shifting in the packaging. Uh, but both legs did inadvertently pop off. So. It seems a little wobblier. Plastic's a different consistency than the other two. More paint apps on here than uh, I thought there'd be. I don't know how to get the laser beak to stay in there all the way. There we go. Now, is the, I mean, it doesn't even tell me if there's like a mechanism to shoot the laser beak out. That's why we look at instructions, right? Just want to see instructions. Is there a bio on here? No, there's no bio on here. Is there a bio on this? Uh... No. No buy on that one. I don't. I don't know. I, I assume the there it is. 
Drop kick. Drop kick. Do you have a bio? My guess is no, but you do have adver advertisements for other figures in the line. All right. So it doesn't tell me how to enact the laser beak function. Oh, maybe like this. Ah, okay. So here's how you do it. You take this and you twist it a little bit. That's a pretty solid ejection. I mean, that's pretty instant. I don't often transform stuff on on the show, but I just kind of want to like. I want to see where we're at. That is, I will say that's pretty clever. All right. Okay, so despite it being a toy aimed at younger kids, I will say this is pretty clever. So this little panel opens up that can work as a hinge to eject the laser beak. All right? All right, get in there. All right, but, th and now this is the cool part. Look at this this slides around to conceal the head. That is clever ingenuity. I don't think I've ever seen that before in a transformer. I'm not in love with this toy, but that is clever. That is really clever. That, that makes me happy. That makes me like this toy a little bit more. That is super, super clever. And you can't, you can't seem to enact the laser beak. You can't shoot him out the back of the truck. Kind of looks like um, Breakdown from Transformers Prime. Um, it's a live show. It happens. I will say, uh, out of the few Cyberverse toys I've opened, this is definitely the best. not crazy about cyberverse i understand why it exists i understand the need it fills and hey there was a, the brand can exist in many different expressions but and especially for these younger kids i really wish there was a bio on the back of the packaging that's it that's it so we got Soundwave, we've got Dropkick, we've got Barricade. Three characters from three different toy lines, all of which have been seen in the films in one way or another. So uh, that was Cut the Tape. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And um, remember, it's never too late to cut the tape. Peace.